speaker very nicely uh, has been provided by Envision Tech. So we've been working a lot with Kevin Dillon. Uh, so both the Army uh, Dental Lab at Fort Gordon and now the Bethesda Dental Lab uh, have been using their printing technology for models. So there's some <coughs> samples over here. There's some sample prints that we made. And actually, I think we're going to print some overnight tonight uh, for use tomorrow in the hands-on. Uh, so you guys will get to see what these models look like, and they look really good. We've, we've been searching for the longest time for a great printing solution, so we think we've, we've finally found it. Um, so they were nice enough to get Dr. Cosmo to come down uh, from Cranston, Rhode Island. And uh, what I went to Kevin, I said, we want, we want an orthodontist who's really invested in the digital process to teach us uh, you know, how we can be efficient. What can we actually make? What, what can we do if we're scanning our patients in ortho? So that's Dr. Cosmo, and uh, just talking with him today, I can tell he is uh, super motivated and passionate about this. He works with both uh, BU and Tufts. He has residents coming to his private practice office to do research. So anything you want to talk about today, anything you want to ask him, he's game. Okay, and he has he's done a lot of uh, research on intraoral scanning as well. So um, anyway, we're really lucky to have you. Thank you for having, having me. Making the trip. my training at UPenn. Um, I don't know if anyone's from Philadelphia area. Love, love, love the education. It's phenomenal. And then under my uh, orthon training, went back near, near Rhode Island again, Gianelli. Dr. Uh, Gianelli, uh, any orthodontists here? Anyone know about Gianelli's um, research and depth? And it really was, when I looked at all the options of all the interviews that I went on, he doesn't interview. But just, I went, walked over to BU and and I heard about him from Safari up at Penn, and I said, oh, Janelli's the best, and thank God I went there. And it, was more, it was just eye-opening, and uh, really was a foundation of my question everything. Basically, his philosophy is question everything. If it's not back to the research, throw it right in the garbage. Um, I, love, I, I love teaching, I love lecturing. Um, I, when I was single, and Docs when I was at a resident, and he asked me, Do you want to come stay on board? And, uh, I worked at the Comab uh, Clinic, which is a private clinic for the you know, Boston University, getting all the faculty, staff, and uh, out outpatients, and teaching residents. So that's their first, that's the great thing about BU's program. They had a private, private practice for their bladder housing <coughs> program. They kind of don't just throw you out into the world, they get you into transition, which is great. So having a practicing and teaching residents, this is what you have to walk, look out for. This is how you're going to transition. This is how, you know, theory versus reality, you know, mechanics. So we do that for you. I love, love the car. Office got crazy busy. And I had a full plug. But again, not the itch to be in the research. And, and now all of us know we're cognitive. We're hands-on, but we're cognitive. Um, but we want to stay in, in touch. And the person that took over my spot at BU, Dr. Vicki Cartos, I don't know if you've heard of her at Tufts. She was director, uh, clinical director at Tufts. She was <coughs> my associate in my office in 2010. And we had a lot of the residents do a lot of their thesis projects, um, come down to the office. That was the first uh, CBTT um, use in Rhode Island, and one of the first in England in 2007. Um, really, again, timing and studying and looking at the different systems out there at the time, just always wanting to do the best for your patient, looking at what technology is available, and getting in the market at the right time. And that's really, hopefully, this, this lecture's focused on, and uh, integrating, but very painful, I'll say that, very painful, and finding what type of technology, and having good support. If you don't have good support, so um, both, the, both residents, uh, now in fact, one became um, one of the projects, and it's important to kind of talk about these things because this is where we are. We are digital technology, and, and, and what is the digital technology doing with home being? One of the, one of the issues is we've been using flat.
flat set analysis for all this time, and we're trying to get use of cone beams with these. So imagine being at that, you know, being frustrated. You say, yeah, beautiful, yeah, great. Looking, well, how can we determine what, where, where is cone beam going to help us? And, and, and you know, I'll go into more detail on that in the next couple of slides. But with Dr. Uh, Moon Young Lee became the director of orthodontics and environment at Tufts, and he's also still at Tufts to try to identify some landmarks, which I'll show you, called Centroid. And then growth. I mean, we're always talking about growth, the development, um, using CBCT to you know when is a child going to grow? What's the optimum time to treat for class two? We know class three is early. Is there a benefit to class two? Right. So, keeping with the standard of trying to be the best you can be, as John Ellie said, and we'll push, push, push. And as orthodontists, we know. Go for that. Just, it's just push, push, try to get very hard, especially as you get into private practice and hours and time. I mean, you have to have clinical cases and over periods of time. Just make sure you try to do that. It really changes your whole philosophy. When you see your, your day to day, you're trying to treat to perfection, but we're not perfect. Never. There's too many factors and variables. And being part of your, your local group, definitely be involved. Um, I was a member of the AO. Early 2000s, I was president of the local <coughs> society. Um, for almost eight, 16 years, I'm part of the Seattle Buddy Club, the Providence Dental Society. So be really in involved with your local dental community, your prosthodontists, your surgeons, your periodontists, and get the, get, keep your finger on the pulse of what's going on out there. And go to these meetings when you get out there. Just really be involved. Um, in the mid, early 2000s, um, Nexus and 3M. I was a test facility for the smart, 3M smart clip bracket. Anyone have any use on smart clip? You still use it after that? So <laughs> I think I, I think they didn't like me too much, you know, on my father's thing because I, I really was telling them, I, mean, I don't know if you know, but the clip design, redesign, the force, the popping of brackets, I was all part of that. I was in that pain process, very painful. And, you know, every patient's binder was this. I had a lot more free time then. Now it's, I, I, I absolutely did switch. I switched my whole office around. Brian, American Orthodontics, who, who created the bi-dimensional Gianelli bracket, and I love them. It's fantastic. And uh, for easy bi-dimensional technique, the bracket's awesome. It's fantastic. At one one third the price of a smart one, which is a no-brainer to me. I can't it. But I mean. They're an amazing company, and they're trying new things. And, and I, and it's, and I have two provisional patents on orthodontic technologies. Um, I know how hard it is. I know how hard these guys think, and the problems and the brick wall that you hit, and you put so many years ahead. It's, it's just uh, the clip is awesome. It's just taking that clip and using it in other fields. It would be, it would be really cool. Yeah, but as far as the bracket. Um, and so current, current projects I'm working on, uh, the biggest problems I have in orthodontics is what? Anyone know what the biggest problem in orthodontics is? Not just tooth movement. <laughs> Every day, did you raise your hand? Did you lose it? A nightmare. And I'm sure for dentists also, uh, I mean, seeing the case in retreatment. I guess it's good for us for retreatment, yeah. But we don't want that. We, you know, it's, it's almost like a, I, I, I get heartbroken. And I give lower spring retainers of all my cases. Automatic, as part of my retention. I give the S6 upper and lower, and I give them a curl upper and lower, and my lab slowed me. So a lot of people don't use. But the spring retainer helps bounce things back, because kids don't, don't listen. <laughs> um, so it's in retention systems, which I can't. Um, I'm still in development. So I'm to another time, which is great to show you what I'm, what I'm doing as well. And uh, speeding up tooth movement. This is that one study we did um, with Dr. Moon and Lee, trying to define, um, so again, digital workflow, and can we create software that finds what is what is centroid? It's what's a, what's a good land, you know, landmarks, A point, D point. What's the problem with those when you when you're doing orthodontic treatment, right? You can change A point, D point, right? So and then reference, you know, Sela, maybe not. So one of the concepts was a 
That's right. Averaging out the whole body, the maxilla, and finding that the algorithmic, algorithmic, excuse me, algorithmically finding the borders of the maxilla. And the mandible. Development of that, getting again, still on, still under research and development on that. Um, but that's where we're at with the cone beam and 3D, right? So can we get a better, more accurate way of saying this patient's class one, this patient's class two, this patient's definitively class three skeletal? And the other skeletal. <coughs> the class two and get that maximum growth spur. Um, the key thing is seeing children early in, in diagnosis and knowing when, when we're going to have that growth spur. You can go them boys and looking at the second and third and fourth vertebrae and the change in the current research uses cephalometric analysis. So you're looking at slices. Questions on this? As far as, far as we can, we can tell when a, when a child's going to grow. I'm going to simplify it. Basically, from look at the shape of this. It's more horizontal, right? And then it gets right about here is when you want to start treating. When it gets more square, almost, uh, and you see a dip in the third and fourth, or second, third. Sorry. You see the change in shape here. So right about it's flat, flat, and it starts bending, and then boom. This is where you want to try to attack a class two, right? Mm -hmm. That's current research between three and four. You want to get the growth phase, obviously, 20, 18 to 20 months. Uh, and then this is kind of an image, but on SF, that's what you see. But how accurate is, is it when you're superimposing, right? Where is your, how accurate can you be, can you be more accurate? So one of the, one of the, this, our study here was taking the midpoint of the vertebrae on on a CBCT and being much more accurate and then finding and measuring that that's reproducible, right? And, and finding the angle and a linear measurement and using that as your calculation of, of when the child's gonna have growth. So that was that's those are the two. So digital workflow, that's gonna have to be a very fast automated process. So when you do a home beam scan, it should be boom, boom. This is the patient here, they're in this growth phase. That's kind of where we're going. This patient is truly class one. This is truly class two. This is my office in Cranston. Cranston is about um, five, ten minutes outside of Providence, um, five minutes from TF Green, which is awesome. Just, I literally was at my office, and about eight minutes later, I was parking my car at TF Green and shooting over here. It was awesome. It's just awesome. And then you're about 20 minutes, uh, 30 minutes from Newport. Has anyone been to Newport? <laughs> just, I love I love being in Rhode Island. Other than the cold weather, it's probably the best place because we're about five to ten degrees, five degrees warmer than Massachusetts. But you see that Worcester line, Boston Worcester line. We kind of don't miss a lot of the snow, and yet, and and I live only I live like right right uh, on the other side, uh, North, uh, North Kingston side, which is I don't know if anyone knows. So it's North Kingston, Jamestown. And my, and everyone knows Newark, Naval Underwater and Walker College. Um, my wife works for, in, in Newark. So uh, that's why we moved right to North Kingston, right at Saunderstown nearby. So she goes right on the base every day. My closest friends are all, all in Newark. I'm there all the time. Um, yeah, I'm very, very uh, supportive of, of our country and our military. So anyway, today's workflow, um, digital workflow, I'm going to talk about this. Uh, kind of an outline. Uh, this is using time need to switch. Can everyone hear me? Huh? Louder, okay. So digital timing and switching to digital work, uh, timing and uh, switching to digital workflow. That's kind of from the orthodontist viewpoint, being 
in your own private practice trying to collect all the data, what company, what scanner, what printer, what, um, with the timing of that, the cost of certain technology. And then how do you integrate that in our office, current office, you know, regular impression, and then the advances. How are we going to integrate new technology, um, the printing technology, and how, how is it changing orthodontic treatment? So obviously, uh, everything has to do with cost benefit, and the cost is um, new equipment. Um, all too often, that, like even with cone beam scanners, and everyone knows how much cone beam, but when I bought the cone beam scanner in 2000, end of 2007, $192,000 for cone beam scanner. So it's really knowing is it going to be beneficial for that huge price getting stuck with it. Um, training, you know, your, your staff, how, is, it, is it something that's going to be too obstructive to integrate in your office? Is it easy to train? Is it, has, it, has they, have they gotten all the bugs out, basically? Really, really critical to ask your colleagues. Go to the meetings and whoever's purchased it, and don't jump in on a technology until you've talked to everyone who's used it and ask them directly, what is the problem with this? What is the problem? Like, don't listen to any reps across the board. Ask the people, and then don't buy it if, if you haven't found anybody. Just, just use it. Just wait six months, a year, make sure you get all, check it out first. And then, obviously, why are we, why are we doing it? You know? Yeah. yeah. Well, I don't know if I really put that first, but yeah, improve your profits, eliminate waste, and speed up your operations and workflow, right? That's primarily what this is all about. Smooth transition, smooth operation for our patients. <coughs> I think the most important factors are staff, staff, doctors, staff, and the patient's time. You know, their life, their quality of life, our quality of life. And more important, another important part is the quality of care you're giving. You know, your clients, if they're fit. Um, so one of the biggest, one of the biggest talks. Theme today in digital technology is why are we doing 3D scanning impression systems? You know, some of the biggest problems with taking impressions. And primarily, we use we use a lot of PBS impressions, but you know, alginate for appliances, you know, abandoned, abandoned impression MEA, um, low holding arches, and, and, and a couple of just a side you note: know, alginate used a lot because still because band fitting. I've yet to see an integration of, of appliance design with metal you know, soldering products. Or I, don't, I don't know how any, anyone else, I didn't even want to dive into it because of the headaches of, I've heard of trying to scan and just send a model to a patient and have a lab make you fit the bands in the model, still nowhere near mm -hmm. as an allergy would, would fit and send to a <coughs> solder. So that's still very heavily used, you know. But again, pull the pop from the tray. You know, bubbles, voids, um, temperature sensitivity, shrinkage, you know, all, all about this, inactive pouring, um, mix ratios, uh, the percentage, we only know the percentage of 2% of shrinkage, um, breakage. And definitely, definitely the biggest problem is unpleasant children and adults. Right? Here, uh, anybody's used this yet? <coughs> no one? Um, 
Um, but look at the size of it. You know, look at the, uh, the weight of the, the cord. And they, you know, the staff love it. You know? And look at, uh, look at the patient. You know, it's pretty comfortable, comfortable positioning. And, and this one here is, is a USB plug-in. So you can take the scanner and move it to the other gear. It's real portability. You know, and we'll talk about other things related to that. But I just wanted to show you the size. And, and, uh, What's brand is that? This is the CareStream CS3500. And it's definitely asking questions people about how um, this, again, we spoke about staff training and learning and learning the bugs of technology. And, and this one here, I have to tell you, it, I, from experience, and I don't know the other ones, I have an iTero also, so we're going to talk about iTero. Um, this one, I found the iTero, they jumped right, right in within like two, three times, they were like flying. Boom, 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 boom. That's again, I think um, Dave was talking. Dave, right? Dave. Dave was talking about a specific distance. That one works on the distance, and it, that's definitely true. That it has to stay stable in one spot. It takes a photo. Snap, 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 snap. So, but once they got that down pat, they, they knew. And it was hard for them to transition from the ITER. They had the ITER first a few years before this one. So, this one I really, last spring is when I got this technology asking different doctors. Again, I go to meetings, ask the doctors what's your problem. And we had a lot of problems the first <coughs> two, three months of just getting the, the staff changing their, their their minds of how they take the scan. You know, like the prior lecture talked about, knowing what is the algorithm doing. That and, and staying more on, on the occlusal surface and inside the ledge when you're doing the scan. Then and knowing and knowing it's like spray painting. This one here is like spraying. It's like what we tell the patients that the, the and all my assistants do all this. I, I don't know anything. Kind of go, they go there. There, you know, spray paint. Make sure they get the detail. And they they all we have three awesome assistants that we let them do, and the other ones are not that great at it. So they do they are terrible primarily. But we have the three that are really good hands on. If they can do it, we can do it, right? And so I, I, I do love this scan. I have two of them. I ordered a second. So some time analysis, right? Taking a regular uh, PVS impression, we timed it, and I asked the staff, right? Upper and lower, we're talking orthodontics, so upper and lower arch, 25 minutes for taking an impression. Forming the model and trimming the model, 15 minutes. Uh, and making a clear retainer, delivering. So these are, these are equal among both systems. So we have 40 minutes here, right? Everyone agree with that? And then for the digital impression flow, 10 minutes, probably less. This is for more complications, 10 minutes. And when you do a scan, there's a lot of cleanup that's done. There's a cleanup program that you have to have an, an assistant or tech really trained to do. And it's just really, like you'll see the image that you've seen other images of, of, a, of a scan, you just get more of a top surface. It really has to be packaged and wrapped print the model. So that takes up about eight minutes. And then the printer clean up, calibration, and materials, four minutes. So you're at you see 22 minutes. Right? And then these are the same. So 22 versus 40. What's your biggest flow um, cost again? Uh, cost analysis before time? Time of office. And you add that time up now. I'll do analysis for the now. And that's an average impression of 20 minutes. What happens when you have a patient which, I don't know, I think you said one out of every, one, out of, one or two out of 10, they have to have a patient come back and take a new impression. So it's double that, right? Mm -hmm. and it, it, the assistant rushes, takes a, um, the impression, and the retainer's are fit, and the patient has to call, come back in. Their time, our time, cost. Huge problems, and it kills you. I don't even want, I even calculate how much added time per year is a saving. Frustration, family frustration, aggravation. You come in, it doesn't fit. We look like it is. It doesn't fit. It's just part of the technology. Now, yeah, this is, yes. Sorry. What's your time for that part? Like, what is your. This is actual. You, you, as a doctor. You 
Oh, I, it's a big fat zero. <laughs> yeah. Nothing. I do nothing. I, do. I, I polish all the brackets off out of uh, adhesives, uh, fine tune. I don't even see the pitch. I, I come after the user scan and talk to mom, look at the third molars, uh, do the scan, talk to about consoles on third molars. And final note, I have everything automated in the office. Progress notes, final notes, all oral hygiene notes. It's, again, it's digital flow. And I'll talk about off the tracker. You have to have your IT person. I don't know if there's anything out there, but these companies have to develop these forms. They have these, you know, I know they have them there, things that are more easy forms. Just boom, hit the button, gone. You know, put your customized notes in, put that in, gone. So I go in, I see Monday, I see 120 patients a day. Uh, Tuesday, 90, 95, Wednesday. Friday, probably like 70. So a lot of people, you don't have, yeah, but you have seconds to talk to the patient. You have to make sure that you're, you're, you're pleasant, you're nice, you're, you're there, you miss no detail. Imagine, you miss no detail. You can analyze all this. So you have to have great staff, super staff. So my staff, God bless, they love. They're, they're awesome. They're, they're training residents and looking at my staff, I think half my staff is better than most residents. Do you do digital scanning with the brackets? Yep. Oh, yeah. And I'll show you. Oh, right. Oh, yeah. So, again, this, this is from JCO's article. And one thing, again, you're looking at scanners. Review the literature. There's people that do the literature. You know, just before you go to them, know what, you know what you're talking about. Don't go to the reps and ask them. No, know what you're talking about. So, this our JCO had this intro all digital scanners, discussed the advantages. So, they talked about accuracy and efficiency of fair liners and retainers. Absolutely. I imagine you never have to redo retainers. And that is the biggest godsend. Our office. We know, boom, it fits, see it. We'll see it, we'll see it in the afternoon. We know we're not going to spend not even one second on you. Actually, the front desk comes back. Mary, have your team? It's in the thing, we're going to go to the front desk. She, they, they, they fit them in the front desk. And it's a sheet, boom, done. It's, it's, not even a, it's not even a clinical appointment anymore. You see it. So imagine the amount of time you're saving. There's no chair. Go on. So that's, that's a huge blessing. And vision tech, we'll talk about that. Huge, right? Scanning, right? Custom braces. I know um, Ormco has custom bracket design. And we talk about I use incognito. So we'll talk about custom braces. Indirect bonding tree. Right? So the, the benefits of, of uh, scanning. So just a couple of things. And then laboratory appliances. What kind of appliances? So, we, you know, occlusal guards, um, mandibular repositioners, twin blocks, right? Um, for growth. That's a growth analysis, timing it, right? Uh, and then boom, go in for twin blocks. That's all, if you have a lot of primary teeth. Very, very, very effective. So, all the systems out there, my God, are busy and confusing. Um, trolley systems. Um, you, you see Serona today, um, you have the uh, you have Tarot, you have uh, 3M's version. Definition. So the, the ones I, I selected for the office, um, I had earlier on, really again, when they first were really not the first version, but the second, third, or third version, I jumped right in right here. And, and uh, we're going to have another slide showing about the cost savings between CVS compression and iTero scan. It's just frightening why you don't have this. If you're doing CVS, my God, please. Uh, it's just a cost of saving each year. And, and the staff. Just look at the size. I know they made it smaller too, but nothing like this. Still, nothing like that. Um, the staff has gotten used to it, but they really, when they, when they went to this, they're like, oh my God, this is like holding a brick. Look at this shoulder. They can do like two scans in a day, that's it. <laughs> switch, go to the other assistant. But it's very, very, you know, very help, very accurate, very effective. Um, Bridgeline bought the company, Cadent. They knew what they were doing. Um, you have to have this in your office for workflow because obviously Invisalign is a big, big, big boy on the block and you're going to use a lot of Invisalign for the mild cases and that's the best cost savings because they have their workflow, right? So they can scan and boom, it goes right to them. You know, they make it hard for all the other companies. Yeah. Did you get the care, uh, care stream? Um, can you take with Invisalign as well or do you have to so use the iTero just for 
I have to use a Hero built for mm -hmm. Google but I have, I, now I signed contracts with mm -hmm. CareStream and Joe Andros. I signed, I signed on the bottom line, I, I, have, you know, I, I give you six months to get integrated with, with the Google line. Mm -hmm. and I, you know, I just kind of pr pressure it and I could pull out of it. But I'm not gonna, you know, I love this so much now that I'm not, I mean, that's when I first bought it. I put that in there, I was like, can you please make sure it integrates STL mm -hmm. with, and, and they, they do, they have, it. that's accuracy is just as good, but they're just blocking it. Right. They want to keep their so block. what does the um, care stream have? Resolution, accuracy, yeah, phenomenal. Okay, phenomenal. This is they're doing extra care, and I'm going to talk about orthodontic treatment right there. Invisalign, special treatment, but color, right? Uh, contrast. This is a novel. The details. This is a staff. That just this is a scan done yesterday. Care stream. Care This is a scan done yesterday. I literally told them more. Just throw me a scan and throw it on there. So this is what I mean by you have to. You have to process it and just get the top view, and then you're gonna have to envelope it. And that's the processing of a model. That's the, the second phase. What do you guys think of the image? Stars. Okay. And the color, what do you think? So here's your, again, JCO, the review of all the um, types of scanners. You know, I, I have, I got, I have the Arturo, and there's the technology. So your scan times are critical, again, they say 10 to 15, about 10 minutes. Definition, the cost, right? So, Icaro is still probably one of the leaders, but you have to pay for each model, right? It's, it's when you want to use it to make other products, so it's not. You can use it for Invisalign now, but if if if, the, if they allow the scare stream to go for Invisalign scans, then why even bother buy that? Just just your 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 care stream option. It's funny because this fee here, I look at down here, it's the 30, that's not what I paid for. That's just what the article I think just moved to the floor and purchased it a few months before, I think. Now there's probably high ones that I paid for. Um, and less than 10 minutes, absolutely. No powder. You know, the true definition needs powder. Why not some of the others? There's huge cost, huge added fees. I mean, we got up, up, up. Uh, the color one was like forty-five thousand, and then it was a monthly fee of I don't know. Anyone can refresh my memory on that. Two, three hundred per month, an additional fee. And I'm like, God, fee after fee after fee. I said, well, I, I, I asked again one of the biggest person who loves the care stream is Todd Eller. Of orchestrate, orchestrate technology. So orchestrate is uh, on orthodontist, and I'm going to go further down. Orthodontist uh, in 2007 um, developed a lot of work with and invented his own patented product that is similar to Invisalign, but puts everything back into your orthodontist hands. And so you have the whole full workflow format in, in my office. So I'm going to do a lot of that technology. I'm going to show you cases. So he's he picking his brain and being there was great to talk to him. I'm very close to him. Uh, weekly, I talk to him. And he has, I think, five of these. And I told him I was very frustrated when I first had that, that system. I said, do you want to do it? He said, take it back. Take it back. I, don't, I hate it. I despise it. And I've come to the conclusion <coughs> that it just was learning, staff learning. And I think other people out there are frustrated because of the type of computer that recommend you need a really fast laptop. So I bought a gaming computer laptop with the fastest graphics card and, and RAM and this thing flies. This thing flies now. And so that's what I mean by integrating new technology and you're trying to solve these problems and you have your IT person look at the background, have a great IT that knows the 
technology? How are they going to integrate? Because the company's not going to do that for you. You need someone's going to put it all together and be there your support. You have to be really prepared for it. So that's why I went with it. The fees, open source. I can use it for my orchestration. Yes, though, but I can send it to Glidewell Lab, and we'll talk about that for my 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 night drive. I can send it to Great Lakes for my swim box fabrication. So open source, awesome. And it really, I, I think Google is going to have dark stuff. Okay, so stepping back a second, talking about I don't know, anyone doing GPS and Invisalign. This, this is your you know, $800 a month for impression material. That's a, uh, this is for 200 scans per year. Uh, if you're assuming time savings, right? And I'm assuming there, it, it costs a savings of $15,000 per year. So in, in two years, you paid your, 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 your unit, and you have much more accurate um, systems. So that, that's a comparative. And this is, this is Invisalign new price sheet as of April 1st. So this is going to be important. I put it here for later on so you can see the prices on this. And talk about orchestrate. Now printers. So in the digital flow, we talked about digital scans. And we heard a lot about that this morning and uh, getting the right file and using it and working on it. But in, in, print, in printing, you want to keep everything uh, accurate container fit trying to find the right one, and are you ready in your office? And do you have the staff to do this? Like if you're a two-person staff in your first four or five years, like I could never have done this in my first four or five years. You need to have a good you know, backup staff. You know, and then in your private practice, one thing I highly recommend is you overstaff at least one and a half people and pay a little extra. It's, it, the cost savings is astronomical later. Just having that one and a half people there one and a half persons a week is out every week. And, and, and just having computer, computer people is heavily, heavily into computer knowledge uh, background when I interview. How do you do, and do a 30 day trial with them. See how they do with computers. How can you manipulate photos? And that's where we're at, everything's digital. It's not just clinical, it's digital. And, and, and know why you're getting it for. Make sure you did your math. So what was out there on last year on the market, what hadn't come out yet, and what was available, and uh, for Stratasys, I had worked with, um, I, and that, again, the first slide came product development. Um, I worked with this company for product development of type of retainers designed that I'm, I'm redesigning. So I was in their lab in North Kingston, they have a, a printing and manufacturing facility there. I'm just very fortunate. We're, Literally three, three minutes from the house. I went to huge printers, all every version, and being able to pick, pick their brain, all the pluses and minuses. And, and let's see, so I asked them, okay, I want to get this from my, my office. I know that I see it at all the orthodontic meetings, I see that printer. Tell me a little bit more about it, what's the cost, and I'm picking their brain. And, and you know, one of the things is, yeah, it's awesome. They use it a lot, a lot of people. And Great Lakes, I think, still sells it. And the unit, I have it further down. And Look this material up. Just uh, about thirty thousand percent. They don't. What they fail to tell you sometimes is you need this little guy, water jet. And it's you know this unit is pretty sizable too. It takes up about three quarters the size of that table. All right. So in your office, where are you gonna put this thing? And then you have another big thing right next to it, and have to have a water water jet. It's a gelatinous material that's around the model when it's printing. So it's 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 cleaning this off, and I'm looking at it. I'm in my lab area, I have an upstairs lab work area. I'm like, it's right all over the place. I'm like, okay, <coughs> no, forget that. You don't know. And the other thing is switching of. We'll talk more about it in vision tech, but it only prints one type of model. So you can only use it for certain things. And we'll talk about flexibility. You want to use different things for different technologies. Um, the bagel. Our sales again, and I actually look at retainers. I think in Lincoln Morale in Tobago Print Facility, and that's about 10 minutes north of Providence. So here I am, I'm, I'm doing research with them, and I'm doing developing with them. So I'm like right in the middle of the, all the 3D printers, and this is like probably two years before I bought these printers. 
But I know about them. You know, I wasn't there. And they were just introducing this last summer. They kept telling me, oh, it's coming out next next month. So then I asked them, how many models can I print? And is this realistic for an orthotic office? And I think it's, I don't know if the bagel person is here, but I think it's like three or four. One, two? One, two. Two? Yeah, two. It's, and it's, the price is like $30,000 for the printer. Two. What, what's that going to do for an orthotic office? It's non functional. Cost. And then you needed this other unit also. So, so here's your again, summary plus your William Adler number of models, where jet size, which is pricing, and approximate. Which your vision do that, right? Approximate, because this is probably a little more. Uh, so they'll tell you about the other. Look at the, com the compact size. It's about one third the size of this table. So I, I currently in my office. Like NASA have backups of the military insured. I have two. I bought two. One, two. Why? Because they break down. Everything breaks down. So I can't have my office stop and I have a digital I have a flow in the office. I have to have two units. One breaks down, boom, shift everything over the other. It has a, a changeable table. It has different materials. You can use different materials for different systems. This um, the ortho tough. Um, versus the e appliance. The ortho tough is is used for um, making just Essex retainers. But if you want to use for lab fabrication of retainers, you need to use the e, e appliance. This is a different type of material, so you can switch. Boom, boom. And this one 